Hello everyone, Commander Bravebelly here. Today on the channel, I have the Mongolian military 24 hour ration. Guys, check this out. It's literally a freaking suitcase. Look how awesome this is. We got the digi camo going on. We have some of, this is Mongolian writing. I can't read that. We have uh, looks what looks like some kind of logo. Check that out. It does look like Cyrillic writing. So I'm not certain if that's similar or not. Most likely it's not. Then we have, I guess the different meals that are in here. One, two, three, four. I don't know if that's in this box or just four different meals to choose from in general. This is the 24 hour MRE. I'm gonna eat everything. So this was boxed in 2023 and apparently it lasts for only a year, which is surprising till 2024. So this is fresh, fresh. And guys, whoever mailed this to me, they're smart. They added a note just in case customs opens the package because they like to do that lately. They take out the meat. So this one says these items are for collectors display only. Psych. And so on the back, it's the customs declaration, postal administration, Mongol post. How awesome is that? I've never tried any type of food from Mongolia. So this is a first for me and it's, it's their military ration. So I'm super excited. Not any details. It's not really filled out. It's for when customs would open this just to psych them out. All right, let's do the unboxing. So right away, the packaging for me is like super appealing. I just like the, the whole vibe of it. Looks cool. And it's a little suitcase. So boom. So what we have here, we have a Mongol post office stamp. Wow, I used to collect stamps, believe it or not, back in the day. Now I'm a different type of stamp collector. If you know, you know. Basically, this is pretty cool. It's a huge stamp. And uh, check it out. Nice, nice little random gift in here. The world highest gold plated 28 yard sculpture Buddha, Megid Juran Singh, Mongolia. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. The world's largest golden sculpture. Hmm, pretty cool. All right, so we have a list, I guess, of all the ingredients. And look at this, we have it in English. Product description, we have liver pate, ready meal with rais, ready meal with vegetables, ready meal with brown rice. Oh, wow. So they, instead of writing brown rice, they wrote B-R-A-U-N, rice is R-E-I-S. They wrote it how you hear it, but not how you actually spell it. So this is their... Uh, product uh, description, this compilation of the UUZ1 is done with 22 items. It's intended as survival ration for one person per day and is equipped with everything useful. The average nutritional value of one man package is about 4,573 kcals. Such nutrition is characterized by a particularly long shelf life, a high nutritional value and its low weight. The UUZ1 are developed in a, are delivered in a flat cardboard box so you can store them in large quantities to save space. Please check out the production date from the surface of the box. So nice. Not only do they have it in their own language on one side, they have it in English, which is, you know, big language on this planet. And so we have everything all written out. They have pictures of everything, but I don't want to just read it all out i want to experience this okay so we have package number one so this is probably meal number one package number two is meal number two and package number three is meal number three then looks like this is some accessories number four so well let's just start with number one number one let's see if this opens it doesn't I'm sure I could tear it open, but I want to show you guys one of my newest knives to the collection. It's actually a United States military. This is from the Marine Corps. Check this out, guys. 
All right, that's the scabbard. Boom! Look how bad boy this knife is. All right, this is actually a bayonet and it's made by Ontario Knife Company, the Combat USMC. See, check it out, it's stamped. So this is official military, I haven't even washed it. Smells like Cosmoline, but I don't care. So it is a full tang, so that means the blade goes all the way down, so it's heavy duty. And this is meant to go on the end of a rifle, a M16. If you know what I mean. So yeah, let's let's get into this. Ooh, like butter, baby. Can't wait to use this more often. So what we have here, we have something open. I see little sugar granules, but that's okay. We have some kind of juice, all right? Some kind of orange weird berries, okay? And it's not written in English on this. Where did I put, let me see if it says what flavor this is. Sea buckthorn concentrate and sugar. See how awesome that is? So we're gonna pour this up right away. It's a concentrate. So yeah, we're gonna dilute it with some water. Might as well get the party started. Okay, with the juice, ooh, right in there. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water Super weird, non-American flavor. Okay, a little bit on the sour side. Guys, I gotta tell you something about this canteen. Hopefully I remember. I don't wanna get sidetracked too early, but I found out something from one of my subscribers about the canteen, and it was some super cool info. So I will get back to that. But first, let's get on this tasting. All right, buckthorn, is that what it is? Sea buckthorn concentrate. It just tastes like super sour, not like tropical, but it's so hard to explain. There's, if there's tartness to it, it has the consistency of like a mango juice, but it's not that sweet. It's more tart. It's very good. This is good cleanser for the palate. It's not like syrupy and sweet. That was actually delicious. Then we have this. Wow, this is so awesome that we have the uh, all the stuff written out, but I actually don't see it. Maybe this is tea. This is some kind of like tea. It actually looks like Look at that, guys. Is that Genghis Khan on it? Maybe. Who Genghis Khan. Bad boy. He's an awesome ruler. Okay, he's the pride of Mongolia. I think he is. Very iconic. We have two cracker sets. These are hard biscuits. Nzaga. Uh, they're wheat, cream, sugar, powder, milk, eggs, baking soda, and lemon juice. Okay, so these are the biscuits. Lay these biscuits out. Then we have some kind of, what is this? It's some kind of ready meal with brown rice or, or vegetables. I don't know, we'll see. It's a pretty serious sized can, pretty big. I'm gonna open up everything because I'm gonna see if, where the heating packs are. So, oh, this is pate. So which one is this? This has cattle, so this is beef, lamb, liver, pork belly, pork, additives, onion, salt, and black pepper. Guys, I'm super impressed that everything's written out in English. Okay, so this was the sugar that spilled out. So you know what? I don't miss it, no big deal. Buttercream. Now Mongolians love their like dairy, apparently. I actually, knew a Mongolian girl, believe it or not. She lived in Seattle, but I met her in New York. She was a friend of a friend and I showed her around New York City. And this is the Mentos. Look, it's from like a bigger pack that they just sliced down. So we have a Mentos and then we have little candy. So I think maybe that sugar is to add to this like, 
tea. I'm just gonna pour it right up. I have hot water. We're gonna give this a try. Guys, let me know in the comments if you're Mongolian what this is. But yeah, so getting back to it. So the Mongolian girl, she, I, I haven't heard her speak Mongolian or any. Wow, this has like a weedy smell. I wonder if this is even should be drank warm. I'm not sure, but see, it looks like a milk. And I know, like I said, Mongolians love their dairy. This might be like a warm milk that they drink. It looks like it has some kind of like farina or, or some kind of meal in it. I wish it was more descriptive. This is one that I don't seem see it say anything. I wonder if I'm supposed to put the butter on this. Yes, this is exactly what I thought this was. This is a Mongolian specialty. This is like a salty milk. And it's meant to be drunk warm. And that salt brings out the flavor. It's so savory. Mmm. Guys, this is actually good. See, if you could see the little bits on the bottom, it's almost like a weed or a farina. But it's very fine. You don't, you don't feel the texture of that at all when you drink it. It just tastes like a slightly salty milk in the best way possible. Perhaps I'm not describing it in a delicious way but it absolutely is good. Let me open this and see if I have like heating elements or anything so I could start heating food up. I am starving, didn't eat all day, killed it at the gym. Okay, today was shoulder day. Went hard on shoulders. Yes, so we do have a heating element and we have three of them for the three different meals. We have a little packet of fork, a spoon, we have napkins, All right, very basic, very cheap looking, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be fancy as long as it works, we have the water purification tablet, okay, just one, we have the little, okay, three of three sets of these, and look, it's got like a little Mongolian design maybe, okay, Oh, we have more, another three pack. Then what's in here, guys? Let's see what this is, surprise, surprise. And this was open. Oh, I know what this is. This candle right here, I believe these candles are smokeless candles. I'm not sure, 100%, but it's a high chance that these are smokeless candles. I would like to light it up for you guys. Let's set the ambiance. So, we're gonna light up a candle here. Now, where's the matches though? I have everything except matches. Wow, that's weird. Well, I just gotta open everything up now. I can't say how sharp this knife is. Okay, so we have another juice. We don't have to do that. We just had one of these. We have more crackers and they're the same. We're gonna put these to the side. We have another one of these meals but this one doesn't have the vegetables this one has like the brown rice we're gonna try both of them okay and then we have like a ham it looks like just straight up ham for slicing so we're gonna have that on the crackers we have another one of these warm milks oh this is so good i'm doing it that's right i'm doing it just gonna add a little more water it's so bomb. I would actually drink this often if it was around and available. Yeah. I wish there was more info about it so I know what kind of milk it is because it could be some kind of, you know, sheep's milk. It says barley, dry milk, salt, salt water, tea, extract, and ghee and millet. So it has some kind of butter. Bring one cup of water to a boil over high heat and add the tea back. So apparently this is like a tea, but it's like, tastes just like salty milk. So this is a pleasant, pleasant surprise. I'm loving it. 
And what do we have here? We have a bag of sugar. I wonder if the sugar goes in there. We have another Mentos and another candy. All right, this looks just like European candy, but we'll give that a try for last. And the final bag. Okay, meal three. This is a lot of food for a, for a soldier, but Mongolians, they're hardcore. Their weather is super hardcore because it's a lot of the country is like a desert, but it's one of those deserts where it gets to up to 104, I think, degrees Fahrenheit, and as low as minus 40, believe it or not. Their capital is like the coldest capital on the planet. So, and there's a completely third different one. So let me read off the different cans. We have one that's beef with horse meat and white rice. Yes! Guys, I'm so excited. I'm trying horse meat first time ever in my life. I think this is actually the one, the one that I just got now. Horse meat with white rice, onion, salt, and black pepper. Oh, I'm so happy this actually got here without being stolen by customs because American customs, like it's because it's probably from directly from Mongolia instead of like Soviet countries. If it was Soviet, they would have stole it. And it expires 2024, so we're eating that fresh, fresh horse right here. All right? Like I said, I just worked out, so hopefully that horse puts more size on me. We have butter. We have more white sugar. We have a chocolate this time. And we have more jelly, a Mentos, and another candy. All the three candies are the same. All the Mentoses look the same. But when this one, we have some kind of chocolate with coconut oh that's my favorite type of chocolate is chocolate with coconut i really love coconut and chocolate not everybody does i absolutely love it and so we're gonna save this for a little later uh so yeah guys i have no matches so luckily for me i have a lighter they're probably assuming you're a modern military man you probably have a lighter probably smoking on something we just warm this up from the bottom so I could stick it a little bit. Oh yeah, it's melting already. Not enough though to stay. She's melting. So yeah, I'm not like a candle guy at all, but uh, why not some ambiance, all right? So they say these are smokeless candles. So we'll, we'll see if that's actually a fact. And let's light these up and start heating this food up. So I'm excited, guys. I hope you are too. Oh, I don't need matches. Look at that. So I didn't even need that lighter because what you do is strike it against this and then it should light up and then just put it down on this. Now, I don't know how this works. Is it like that? No, that can't be like that. This probably holds that and i don't know if this is to make it stand i don't know i'm a spaz i wish there was a picture there is a picture the pointy ones go up top yeah so sorry guys these go like this i believe the small ones are for the legs that's what I, that's what it's looking like which is weird but yeah. So something like this. All right. Let me make some room now. Since I unboxed everything and put the little stamp collection to the side, set my crackers off to the side. Now, I'm not going to need this bad boy knife right now. So awesome, my favorite knife. I think this is, oh, this is called the OKC 3S. Just in case anybody's curious. I actually got this on Amazon. So, so far this has been my most expensive knife purchase. It's, it's like over 200 bucks, but it's like, just say it's useful, that's for sure. I do get these knives more to like showcase knives when I'm eating military foods, but I also like to own them so yeah take that for what it's worth 
right, I'm gonna move these crackers aside. Gonna make a little bit of room for presentation and gonna start warming stuff up and eating. Okay, got a little pot going. Um, yeah. So, just gonna light this up first. Do it right here so you guys can get a full view. Now let's see how these work. Oh, not that great. Oh, got him. See, now from this, I could light that candle so I actually don't need a lighter. So let me hold it. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely burning, burning. All right, let's start it off. We're going to save the horse meat for last. So this one here is ready meal with... Oh, yeah, this is the... Wow, another one. Beef, horse meat, buckwheat, onion. So, guys, I'm. this is the most excited. I might not look it, but horse meat. I've never had horse meat. The only time that I've ever heard any American say that they've tried horse meat is this girl that I know. She's from Okeechobee, Florida. Wow, that's gonna be that's gonna be a hot surprise. I don't want to burn myself. Well, see the thing is about these. I feel like is it still burning? Oh yeah, this is gonna be just so hot. Thankfully for me, I have my little stove here. We're just gonna speed things up and use it. All right, so. There we go, we got a stove running, guys. Let's be smart. Instead of burning ourselves, we're just gonna use this. I don't wanna burn the bottom of the food. So. Yeah, this can is already burnt, basically. Or burning hot is more what I mean. That way, oh, we can see about this horse meat. So this is what it looks like. Buckwheat, beef, and horse with onions. I'm gonna try it raw. It's not really raw, but that's what it's looking like. Definitely have to stir that up. So we're gonna put these tablets off. Ah, that beautiful sizzle. Let me set this off to the side because we're not gonna use that. We still got the candle for ambiance. Hopefully I don't burn nothing. Let me stir that up. Guys, I'm getting to eat horse meat. Wow. Never, never had anything like that. I would eat it more often. All right. Ooh, that sizzle is intense. While we wait, we're going to eat some of this pate. Why not? Check out the pate. Now, pate, I'm not heating it up. And the cool thing is that there's butter here. So we're going to put butter down on these crackers and have it with the pate. So that's definitely a first for... Uh, military rations is actual butter. I've never had butter in rations. Let's see about these crackers. Okay. Straight up. I thought I love the Polish crackers. They're good. But these taste almost like these are literally biscuits. They're not even crackers. They're biscuits. They're way more pleasant. There's something that you have with with uh, with that milk, probably. They're more like a dessert. They're like sweeter. Okay, so we will do it that way. We're gonna have. All right, some of this. Oops. Good. Wow, that's good. And the biscuits taste buttery. Guys, I don't know 
what that butter is for. Like, do I put it on the biscuit? The biscuit already tastes buttery. And I'm surprised I don't have biscuits that aren't as sweet and buttery tasting because, wow, unless they eat their meat like that. And I'm surprised they don't have anything to like, maybe I could put the butter in here so it doesn't burn the pan, but I'm glad I put it on the frying pan. Otherwise it'd be, but guys, these biscuits are beautiful. They're absolutely, they, they literally taste like butter cookies. That's what this is. These are basically butter cookies. Mm. Wow, that's good. All right. So we're just going to give it a try. We're going to see if we can have these cookies with jam and with butter. Because I've never had it that way. But hey, there's a first for everything. Why not? We'll see what it's all about. All I gotta say, so far, these are the best biscuits I've ever had in an MRE. Straight up butter cookie. All right, so I'm gonna open up this strawberry jam. Let's get this fire out of here. I have all these fires roaring. Get out of here, fire. So check it out, that's the strawberry jam. I don't want to burn nothing. All right, just a little more and it's basically done. Oh, this is done. Now the taste, okay, so we have that buckwheat taste. We have that meat taste, okay? It tastes very creamy. Mmm, very good, but like I said, very creamy. I can't believe I'm eating horse. You know what, I'll be honest with you, you can't tell that it's horse, it's just meat. So, guys, I'm eating horse. Mmm, a little chaser. Mmm. Mmm. And they go good together. Cause like I said, this little mix tastes creamy. And so it goes with the creamy tasting cookie. Mm. Never had I had cookies with meat, savory and sweet like this. Mm. Followed by the salty milk. This is hands down the most exotic MRE I've ever had, yet it's one of the most, it's actually delicious, guys. Never would I imagine that I'd think that it's so good if somebody just told me what it is. It's freaking horse meat, that's weird. So the fact that it's actually delicious. Okay, so now we have the one with vegetables. I'm gonna fire this one up. This one I'm gonna put in a pot, why not? So this is called, yeah, beef. This looks like beef. Is it this one or this one? Beef, barley, onion, salt, and additives. I don't know if that's, the, no, that was the one that I had over there. This one is beef, horse meat, white rice, and onions. And this one is beef, horse meat, and buckwheat. Okay, so this is the beef and barley. Okay, guys, it's hard to get it, but regardless, two of these have horse meat, so let's see if I can tell what it tastes like, if I could actually taste the horse meat. Okay, it looks the same. Oh, burnt myself right there. As a soldier, it's not good to burn your hands. You'd be probably making this with, uh, with gloves on, especially, you know, your trigger finger. You don't want that burnt. It's just inconvenient and 
it would suck to be in the trenches somewhere. But yeah, more about Mongolia. So the girl that I um, that I met from Mongolia, just a friend, a friend of a friend, and I was like being a good host. So I was showing her all over, all over New York City. She absolutely loved it. So I didn't get to experience none of any of her culture because she was all so excited about being in New York. But she was surprised that I actually knew a lot about the culture just from watching documentaries and Genghis Khan and the guy, apparently he killed over 40 million people. So that's a lot more than Hitler. And everybody talks about Hitler, but not about Genghis Khan. But anyway, he was, in essence, he was basically the God of war. Okay, because he, he had, apparently like the Great Wall of China was built to keep the Mongols out. That was like one of the main reasons they built the Great Wall of China. Because I mean, they were just taking over lands and the Mongolia expanded so much and they're just ruthless. It's the country of horses. Horses are so huge out there. Not in size, but just in, um, just they prevail in the culture. Like the, they had, so the reason why the military was so good and effective is there were archers that were on horseback, so cavalry. So, and they were just like really good at bow and arrows. And yeah, so they basically devastated all their neighboring countries. Because Genghis Khan brought a lot of clans together and uh, unified them and made them so powerful. But yeah, they also are known for, let me open up this jam and shut my app. All right, sorry guys, those of you that just wanna watch me eat. Just, I, I like the Mongolian culture because it's so intriguing to me. In essence, that's what I'm trying to get at. You know, they're nomads, still 30% of the country are nomads. Guys, I just messed this up. The jelly just literally leaked out. I've never had that happen with any kind of MREs. It smells fine, but it's the most liquidous jelly. Some actually fell into here. Wow, that's, it's hard to get a taste because it's so liquidy and it's not enough. Some fell in here, so we're gonna have some sweet meat going. Let's try this with the cracker. Guys, we gotta move on to the next one because there's so much more. All I have to say is these crackers are legit straight up sugar cookies. That's what they taste like. Wow. I don't wanna burn myself. Let's stir this up. So yeah, this is looks more like it could be horse meat. It's just like, it looks more dank. It looks like a little bit darker, the meat. Does It smells just like anything else. Okay, it smells like beef. Beef and, and uh, buckwheat. Give it a taste test real quick. See if it's hot. I mean, it's steaming, so. The buckwheat is strong. The meat, it, it doesn't stick out. Like it doesn't have a strong overbearing flavor. You taste the buckwheat a lot more. It's like the meat is just there to add sustenance and like a little more flavor to the pure, you know, basic buckwheat, but it's not overwhelming. So, so far, both of these, like you don't taste horse. You just taste meat. I actually think I like this one more. 
So any of you guys who are actually Mongolians, tell me the one that I like more. Is that the horse one or not? So this is the final big boy meal. We're gonna heat this up on the pan also. Okay, let me lay it out. This is this one. This one definitely has to have horse meat. Two of them did, so I already most like, well, definitely had horse meat. Oh, this is this is rice. So now, okay, this is gonna be completely different. It doesn't smell like anything, just typical like canned food. It doesn't smell like chemicals, but it's not strong of food, like a strong semblance of a food smell. And look at how that looks. I'm gonna mash it up so it couldn't cook a little more evenly. This one, you can tell it has more like veggies in there. Look, see the side view? That's the side view. I'm loving this experience, guys. This horse meat right here. That's one for the books, if I do say so myself. At, at my age, there's not many things that I haven't tried. And this is the first time I tried horse meat. I was actually looking forward to it just because it's truly, truly exotic. All right, let's fire that bad boy up. And let's have more of this. Now let me do a comparison. So that definitely tastes like buckwheat. So Okay, so this is barley and this is buckwheat. So the barley is just beef, onion, salt, and yeah, so beef and barley. This is the horse meat and buckwheat and onions and salt. And so the, the horse meat tastes better, in my opinion. <clears throat> Maybe it's because that buckwheat. I love the taste of buckwheat. The barley, It has more of a creamy, creaminess to it. Almost like a mashed potato. It's not bad at all, but I like the taste of buckwheat more. Maybe it's from eating all the Russian MREs. They have a lot of buckwheat. And then also, not gonna lie, my parents make buckwheat at home, so I've grown to get accustomed to the flavor, especially when it's on, done on the frying pan with like some pork, just to add some fats to the, <clears throat> to the buckwheat. Now this one seems a little more dry, even though we have meat in there, it just seems a little on the dry side. Guys, check this. Horse meat, okay? Well, I'm actually eating horse meat. Like a warrior, Mongolian warrior. Hope I turn into one. Mmm. Taste it with one of these crackers. All right, so now we're gonna try this ham. Let's see what's in this ham. Apparently this is beef, goat meat, pork rib belly, and additives, whoa, that's funky. Check it out, that's what the can looks like. Ooh, yeah. And that's how it looks like canned with all the fat on top. We're gonna just get in there. First, we're gonna try it like this. First bite going in. It's very good. It tastes like a canned ham. Just salty, not overly salty. Like somebody just told you it's canned ham, you would believe it. It's nice. It's kind of uh, like a medium texture. It's not like pure ham, like canned ham. It's not like that dense or rubbery.
and it's not like soft like pate. So it's just right in between. So you have, it has a good chew to it. Not bad at all. And I already smell, I'm burning this pan. So I'm just gonna call it a day with this one. Consider it done. Let me turn this stove off. Set that to the side. And let's try, I'm gonna eat another one of these crackers with this, uh, this goat and ham. And what else do we have in it? Beef, goat, goat meat. It doesn't have like that goat flavor to it at all. This literally tastes more like ham than anything. It's very good. What I'm gonna do is mix this up and have it with some of that. Let's try this first. This is how it looks. All right, so this is more of a rice. This is the white rice, beef, horse meat, onion, salt, and black pepper. First bite going in, white rice and horse meat. Genghis Khan. Mm. Wow, the little red pieces are little peppers. This is, out of all the food, so far out of the mains, this one I like the most. I love buckwheat, but the pepper here adds just slightly more depth. The little, the little spice. Mmm. The spice helps so much, just make it more flavorful. Because this tastes like beef and buckwheat, even though there's horse meat in it. This tastes like white rice and meat with peppers, okay? Spicy peppers, but they're not like, you get more flavor than spice, but you could tell these were previously spicy, like they have that strong flavor. Mm. You know how you eat a horse one bite at a time. All right, so now let, we're gonna have some of this meat in here and some of that meat in there. Guys, don't you worry, we still have a pate. And then we're gonna try this chocolate. Let me have some of this milk. Ah, this salty milk tea. This is so exotic. And I'm gonna have one of these. Ooh, that's good. And salty, and it's a little bit sweet because the milk, obviously. So we're gonna have another one of these juices. Okay, and so they gave us three packs of these. On the ingredients, they have like other juices. We only got one of them, but they also have a huckleberry one and a blueberry one. This is the sea buck one. So yeah, now we're gonna wash it down with another sea buck horn. 100% juice. Maybe let's double it up. Yeah, why not? double up the juice, make it extra flavorful. Since I'm having horse, might as well double up the juice. Okay. Guys, oh, so now I remember, I'm glad I reached for this. So one of my viewers told me about this. So check it out. Well, first let me pour it up. This is so cool. I just found it out from a viewer, I think yesterday. And that's why I love doing these videos and interacting with my viewers. But basically what they told me is, you see the back of this, see this little cone? It's a rubber cone. And so the reason for that, I didn't even ask about it, they, or at least I don't recall asking about it. Maybe I did. But see this tab up here? I never knew what that tab is for. See that tab up there? It's like, that's so random. And it's like, if you push on it, it doesn't pop off. But my viewer told me if I force, force it, you see that? It's a rubber seal, but it's actually a, a hole that you could um, put a straw in there, like a specific straw, I guess. So you could drink your water, even if you have a gas mask on. 
How cool is that? So now I have to find out where I get this straw just to get that experience. You could drink while having your mask on, very smart. So that's cool. So thank you to my viewer who put, who put me on. So yeah, guys, if you have any cool insight on this Mongolian MRE, please let me know in the comments down below. Even cooler if you actually served in the Mongolian military. I'd love to hear about that. Mm. Now with that meat, it just takes, it, it goes very well together. It tastes more meaty. So in essence, it's more filling. And like I said, this meat doesn't taste like goat at all. It tastes like a ham. So yeah, that tastes a lot like buckwheat. That's the strongest flavor in there. And so now we're gonna have some of this horse with white rice, peppers, and some of this goat meat. Now there is a lot of rice here, <clears throat> so this food is absolutely filling. But that that red pepper in there, I don't know if you can see it. I wonder what type of pepper. It's almost like a habanero that is not spicy anymore. That's what it looks like. It has that strong pepper flavor. It's good. All right. Mm. This is so weird, guys. The flavor. The sea buckthorn. It tastes like nothing that I, I could explain that Amer like is it's typically found in an American supermarket. We're going to open another one of these because now it's time to have some of these sweets. So we're going to eat another one of these crackers with the jam. Guys, so, so far, rundown. These are the best crackers I've ever had in an MRE. They're basically sugar cookies, and I love that. They're not, uh, as you can see, they break easily, but they're so pleasant to eat. They're just, they, they're like those sugar cookies in the round tins, in the blue round tins. That later on, you use the tin for like, Sewing kits, that's what this tastes like. And my fingers are so greasy now, so there you go. And see, this jelly is definitely like wet, wet. It's weird, I've never seen jelly come like this, or I mean jam, you see that? Just literally drips out. Now this tastes like it's made out of real strawberries. It, you could see, if you look up close, you could see the actual like strawberry seeds and and even like little fibers of like minced strawberry, believe it or not. But I'll be honest with you, it's not that delicious, almost because it tastes like a real strawberry, so it's not too much sugar added, if any, okay? Yeah, so it's not like you're eating like a delicious and like rich, sweet jam. This is more like strawberries with no sugar added. It tastes healthier, not super sweet. So that's different too. What else is different? Um, freaking horse meat. Two of these are horse meat. That's so awesome. So I'm grateful for that experience. Let's see about this buttercream. Oh, wow, I still have pate. So look at this buttercream. Okay, just the way it looks, it looks like it was handmade or something, you know? Salty buttercream probably goes great with these since they're not salty. So what I'm gonna do is put some butter on it and then I'm gonna have one with the pate. I think this is so far my most favorite experience with an MRE, just because it's more exotic than anything else. Like the Chinese MREs, they were really good, but it reminded me of Chinese food. This doesn't remind me of anything that I know of. I'm eating freaking horse, all right? We're gonna see about this.
it doesn't add to it. It just tastes like salty butter on top of a butter cookie. So it doesn't really, you know, add too much to it. So just random. All right, let's see about this pate. And it has a slight pate smell, but you really have to like sniff on it hard. So it doesn't hit you with like this intense smell. All right, the ingredients are cattle. So it's beef, lamb, liver, pork belly, onion, salt, and black pepper. Okay, so it's recommended to use immediately after the release of the lid. So once you open it, consume it, and that's it. Don't let it hang around. So it definitely has like that dark look to it, like it's livery. It doesn't look that dark, actually. It looks a little darker in here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah. This tastes like real pate. This is what pate tastes like. Like the one that people that have never had pate, they'll have a hard time enjoying this, but I love it. This has that liver flavor, okay? The aftertaste of it, very coppery, very minerally, it's delicious. Still can't get over the fact I'm eating something like this on a sugar cookie. Because like I said, this tastes nothing like a cracker. And they're all the same. They're all the same. Just open up a, a random one to see perhaps it's something different. But like I said, it's, it's definitely a different experience eating these sweet biscuits with pate that's so super livery. And I like the pate by itself. Oh yeah, has that dankness to it, real liver. But then I'm putting it on like a cookie in essence. I'm not used to that. That tastes a little weird. Now let me try this with a little bit of butter and a little bit of pate to see maybe like that's the combo that I need to try. So we've got that butter going, a little baby sandwich. All right, and then a little dank pate. Ooh, look at that. Mm. It just tastes slightly saltier because of that butter, the salty butter. But these, although these are the most delicious biscuits I ever had in an MRE, they kind of don't jive well with all these savory foods like horse meat, or pate in the way my palate, you know, expects the food to taste. The same with this uh, sea buckhorn. Tastes super different. I can't even explain it. it. Has a little bit of tartness to it. Not sweet at all. It tastes like some boiled berries. That's about it. Almost like A little bit of a blueberry flavor, slightly blueberry, like a real blueberry, like no sugar added. If you just took a blueberry and chewed on it, that's what this tastes like. Uh, yeah, very much like a berry. All right, though I guess this is the final one, guys. This is the milk chocolate, and it's a milk chocolate. This is the first MR, MRE. That's an actual milk chocolate. It's got pictures of camels. It's called Golden Gobi. Okay, because the Gobi Desert, that's the desert in Mongolia. And it has two camels on it. All right, the famous Gobi Desert. Gets to minus 40 degrees. 
And so that's awesome too. We have milk chocolate, which I prefer. I hate dark chocolate. See how it looks like. Oh yeah, this is this looks like it was it's seen better days, guys. So it's got like that old factor happening to it. But guess what? I don't care. Mmm. Just tastes like milk chocolate. And it's very pleasant and good and creamy. This tastes a million times better than any chocolates that I've had in MREs. So, so far, in my opinion, the Mongolian MRE, I would say is definitely in the top five, maybe top four MREs. They have a lot of things going for them, okay? One, it's very exotic. So let's take that off the table because not everybody loves exotic. For me, that this probably is number one as far as exoticness compared to other MREs. But as far as the food, they have the most pleasant biscuits. These are pleasant, okay? These are not like some military food. This tastes like a biscuit in grandma's house. What else do we have that's good? That salty milk tea is phenomenal. It, the, the, it's a, apparently it's tea, but it tastes like a warm milk with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. It's actually good. The salt brings out the flavor. I loved it. I love that this is milk chocolate. It's my favorite type of chocolate. We're gonna try this candy. I love that it's, uh, you know, savory, relatively savory food. Yeah, that, that's what I think about that. Mmm. The chocolate is good. Now check this out. We're gonna finish off with the candy. No idea what type of candy that is. It looks like typical European candy. Not very pretty. Okay, solid. Solid candy, which I like. I don't like when it's chewy. And just tastes like raspberry. It literally tastes like raspberry and just like a lot of sugar. It's not the worst candy that I've had. So from a one to 10, the candy is like a seven and a half. Let's see about this Mentos. It's orange on the pack, but it's probably mint. We'll see if it is mint. You never know. All right, Mentos. Guys, it is not mint. It's orange. It's orange Mentos gum. It is mint. It's like orange mint. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, it's an orange mint. The first, the outer shell, it just tastes like orange. Mm. And that's what all the flavor is. And the inside is mint. That is so weird. I've never had that before. Guys, thank you so much for staying this long and watching to the end. I appreciate you guys the most because you could bear through all my yapping. So greatly appreciate it. Please leave comments down below. Tell me about some of this stuff. If you know more in-depth info on it, if you perhaps served in Mongolian military, tell me about some of your experiences. I definitely like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Till next time, signing off.